Are you slow and looking to get faster on the ice? If you're slow, being a grinder won't make you faster. Grinding it out will actually make you slower, but able to repeat effort. Whereas instead, especially for speed, you may be better off developing fast twitch, a lactic, short burst, faster first five steps. The trade-off being that it's harder to repeat effort. I encourage hockey coaches and pundits everywhere to be much more specific about this subject because they talk nonstop about having to work hard, grind it out, work hard, push through it. Did I mention work hard? That is not gonna get you faster. Now for someone who worked hard and slow twitched themselves into utter oblivion, I need much more elastic, fast twitch, speed work. Not that that looked good, which most hockey players who grind and repeat actions need as well. Millions of dollars are made in those first five steps. Millions of dollars are not made being a grinder. Otherwise, all the fourth liners that you see would have the same contracts as the best players. And guess what? They do not. I will likely get a lot of flack for this video, but the takeaway is this. It matters what you grind, not how much you grind. It's not that you should not work hard. That's not what I'm saying. All I am saying is that as hockey coaches and players, we need to be a lot more specific with our type of training by asking questions like this. Are you slow and looking to get faster on the ice? So welcome to the long form version where we go over a little bit more of what I talked about in detail. Yeah, like I'm basically going to expect like a bunch of replies and comments saying like, what do you know about getting faster? Oh, what do you know about making the NHL? Look at your elite prospects page. Like, it sucks. It's, you didn't make the show. Like what, what, what credibility do you have? Here's my credibility. I've actually studied the best players and I've studied the best athletes in the world. From my research with Train 2.0 Hockey and ATG Athletic Truth Group, Train 2.0 does the research on how the best players move on the ice, and then ATG has prepared your body better than anything else I've seen for moving better on the ice, whether that's moving without pain or moving faster or moving more controllably or moving for you know, a longer distance that you can carry out your software. HEG is the hardware that makes the software with Train 2.0 a lot easier. Now at the same time, Train 2.0 is the software for hockey because what Train 2.0 focuses on is your movement on the ice, which we can debate whether or not that's been taught poorly or badly throughout the years, but that's basically the idea and the focal point around Train 2.0 is that they teach how the best players move. And in my view, that is the hardware to then move around on the ice to carry out your strategies and positional play and what makes hockey the game that it is. So you got the body hardware with ATG, you got the mechanical hardware with Train 2.0, and then you have the software of hockey as the game that it is. So, how do you get faster? The first thing you need to know, how often are you gonna be on the ice? It's not gonna be for hours and hours on end. Most players are not gonna be on the ice every day, as much as we would like to. That's just not gonna happen. So, what's the best course of action around that? Well, you could practice a bunch of stuff off the ice. You could practice a bunch of movements off the ice. And that will help to an extent and it's better than nothing you could also do some in-depth strength work which is what atg provides i think a lot of people mix up that atg actually helps out your body as a whole but it doesn't matter like what sport or um movement that you get into or or any area that you get into, it's gonna help out all of that because it's working your connective tissues. Our bodies are made of connective tissues and HEG works to strengthen all that and has these standards based off your own body weight that you can, you can get more towards and it breaks down into sports specific areas. So there's stuff for basketball, there's stuff for football, there's stuff for hockey. There's stuff for rock climbing, there's stuff for wrestling, 
the stuff for jujitsu, like maybe all those other sports. So if we focus on the, the hockey part, mainly there's a couple for the hips. You may have seen a bunch of HG split squats and seated good mornings. Those are your two main ones for the lower body. Upper body can get a little bit more complex, but if you had to pick two exercises, those would be it for from mastering with ATG and getting like really strong with ATG. I would like to see players reach 100% of body weight on both of those exercises. That I think is what's going to help them out out here. I am I'm able to do that with the HG split squat. I'm not able to do that with the seated good morning. But that is what we'll work towards. Now, the flip side, how do you get faster on the ice? Ice is not the same thing as ground, which is why if you put sprinters out here, they wouldn't run as fast as some of the, the best NHLers. So what does Train 2.0 focus on? The first thing is rewiring what it is that actually propels us on the ice. We're on a very slippery surface and we're in these really stiff objects, so it makes no sense to use our toes as they traditionally mechanically function on the ground, on normal ground. So what do you do about that? Everything that makes you move out here, you need heel pressure and a few other pillars too, but that's basically the main one. Like my weights to my heels right now, look at me, I'm going forward. A little bit of softening of the ankles, letting the knees go over the toes, I go forward automatically. That's the first thing you need to establish when you're looking to retrain your biomechanics on the ice. The other thing that could be looked at is your footwork speed, which would be cadence. Now that could be something looked at with off ice too. Like maybe runners have a high cadence or uh, linemen or, or other athletes like that too, where their, their cadence is really high and then their bodies are able to, to handle that higher cadence with more force output that they end up going faster as a whole. I know that was complicated, but basically like it means that your work in the gym improves your body's capacity to do more on the ice and then your mechanical training on the ice can be improved by increasing the rate at which you move your feet. So if let's say you're at a cadence like this, even if you have all the mechanical pillars, I'm going to move decently fast, but it's not as fast as say like if I pick up the rhythm. So if I had to break it down to three components, it would be your work in the gym makes your on ice movement easier because it increases your body's capacity to express different movements by training your connective tissues and not forcing yourself to be injured. Then you rewire your mechanical training to be out here, slippery surface, stiff boot, wearing knives, basically, you're on this little eighth of an inch at all times, like you're not even on the whole blade, you're on an eighth of an inch. And you do that by moving your weight to your heels. And on top of all that, you improve your footwork speed with your cadence. I hope this was all helpful and I hope this wasn't too long. And like I said in my little short, we need to be a lot more specific with this type of training. I'm seeing too much of, you know, bag skating bullshit that frankly doesn't work. And I've seen it firsthand where it doesn't work. I know it in myself that I would be out here for hours working as hard as I could. I wasn't getting any faster. I wasn't smart about my training. Now that I am, smart about my training and I understand more of what goes into let's say an elactic capacity or a fast twitch or what truly speed is about and taking that training to on ice now I can be a lot faster than I was before and not just be a little grinder I slow twitched myself into utter oblivion like no kidding which any of us can do but it's very hard to then switch that and the ways that I found with ATG and Train 2.0, 
they're the quickest pathway to getting faster. So hope that helps. I'll see you next time.